Hello, Blenders, and welcome. Welcome to episode number 269 of Real Blend, a podcast that is scared and definitely, definitely isn't ready. My name is nope. Sean O'Connell. I'm the managing editor at Cinema <laughs> Blend. On this week's show, actor and director Patrick Wilson is going to join us to discuss shifting over into the director's chair for Insidious, The Red Door. Stick around right after the interview. I will give you guys my spoiler-free reaction to the film. And then we are going to bring over a very fun game that has been part of the Real Blend Premium episode for a long time. So uh, hang out with us and play along with us. We'll get to that in a hot second. Uh, in the meantime, let me introduce the boys. I got Kev McCarthy of Fox 5 in Washington, D.C. looking dapper as ever. Hello, Kev. How are you, sir? Hello, Sean. And just uh, just for reference, uh, because I'm recording this at my television station because I'm in between my live shows, so I don't have my normal background. But uh, if you're interested in seeing a beautiful sunny day in Bethesda, Maryland, please log on to our YouTube channel, which I think might be the greatest tease of all time. We're going to get millions of views yeah. on this one. So uh, head on over to Real Blend's YouTube channel. But no, in general, though, you should watch the show because... A lot of nuances and videos, especially with last week with our guest, Lee Cronin, who directed Evil Dead Rise and the book aspect of it. Um, we try to give a visual element as much as possible. But uh, yeah, good to see you guys and uh, uh, honored to be doing the show with you guys as always. Also, the visual element is allowing um, people who watch the show to do animated versions of us, which is now a thing. We had the Pixar yeah. characters, then we got Lego characters, and then right. Donovan, who's going to help us out a little bit later in the show, uh, re reimagined us as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And so <laughs> right, right. I want this to just keep going. I want people to keep coming up with different ways to portray us um, in various forms of animation. If there's a... a uh, like a Spider-Verse person out there who wants to sort of imagine us as spider people. That'd be cool. All right. If you're watching us on YouTube, you will notice that Jake Hamilton uh, of Fox 32 is not here, but he is being replaced by the equally handsome uh, and just as charismatic Gabe Kovach. Producer, just as charismatic. I don't know about host. that. Hi, Gabe. I don't know you? about that. I'm good. I'm good. Just as charismatic. Now, that would be that would be more, something. Jake's more? pretty charismatic. More charismatic? No, no. I mean, Jake is so animated. He's a Pixar character on his own. All right. Uh, Jake is not here, but he will be back around later on this week for something important that we will continue to tease on social media and then uh, confirm once it is confirmed. So um, as <laughs> mentioned, if you're watching us on YouTube, go to YouTube.com backslash Real Blend Podcast uh, to figure out all this stuff that we're talking about. Give us a like and a subscribe. You're going to head to the comments later on to answer a question that I'm going to have for you. And in the meantime, uh, if you're listening to us, all the different places where you get your audio Podcast needs met. We thank you for that as well, too. Have you signed up for Real Blend Premium? It's a way to get ad free versions of the show and a newsletter from myself. Um, so check the description for information wherever you happen to be listening to Real Blend on how you can sign up. OK, as mentioned, uh, Insidious has a new chapter coming out called The Red Door. Uh, what's been interesting about the Insidious franchise is that you had uh, the first one and the second one, which followed this family that was headed up by uh, Patrick Wilson and Rose Byrne. And then uh, Insidious 3 and 4 became prequels that um, primarily focused on Lynn Shea's character. Uh, and now for uh, Insidious 5, Patrick Wilson is stepping back in and it's kind of continuing the story from chapter two. But but what was most interesting about it is that Patrick decided he was going to take over the directing responsibilities for this. And um, he came on the show to talk about directing Insidious. But in the process of that, we talked about whether he ever had a chance to do this for the Conjuring franchise, uh, how he keeps those franchises separate and exciting for him, um, different inspirations that he had as a director to bring to the Insidious franchise, the the influence that James Wan um, and several of the filmmakers that he worked with, including Zack Snyder. We talked a lot about Watchmen um, and just, you know, the, the types of things he wanted to bring to the Insidious franchise. So. I will stop talking and I will pass the baton over to Patrick Wilson, who is the director and star of the new film Insidious, The Red Door. I want to start us here by sort of asking, um, at what point, as you were leading up to directing The Red Door, did you start to like shadow other directors you were working under and start asking them technical questions? Or did that even happen as part of your process? That that didn't really happen um uh I, I think because i have such a rhythm as an actor that you know we were shooting the third conjuring movie when i when this idea started percolating when i started to think about what i was going to do here uh, i mean maybe i kind of 
looked around a little bit more, but not not really. Like I never was one of those like. And then I went and shadowed Martin Scorsese. Like I would just, you know, I didn't. I didn't do that. That's the sort of answers we're looking for. So if you could just make up stuff like that, that'd be really great. <laughs> well, I followed a young man by the name of Steven Spielberg. No, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't do that. I didn't do any of that. I, I, um, I knew, you know, I, but that being said, I think James would be the first one to tell you, uh, I, I would always, I've been very conscious of what, lens size, what the camera's doing, how much are you gonna, are we gonna cover this? Where are you, where are you shooting this? I, I've always been that guy, cause I, I think it's important for actors to know that, I do. I'm, mm -hmm. I don't think actors should be in a vacuum where they don't, I'm totally clueless of the camera. Well, that's kind of, to me, that's a little ignorant. I, 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 I you wouldn't say that on stage. Like, I have no idea where the audience is. Like, that's just <laughs> ridiculous to me. So, yeah. I, 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 it's a similar kind of stagecraft. It's just a, a film craft, really. So I've always been conscious of that. And certainly the last several years, I've become very, very aware of that. So I, I, I kind of knew that. And I knew, you know, I know what kind of movies I like, what kind of look that I wanted, uh, what kind of angles and shots that I wanted. I didn't know a lot of, you know, I didn't grow up, I didn't go to film school. I was not a photographer. So when you start getting into iris and exposure and things like that, not my forte. So right. um, I just wanted to surround myself with people that did know that, you know, but I, I know what looks good to me. So, yeah. 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 Uh, Patrick, you mentioned Conjuring. As you were starting to decide uh, sort of that you were going to direct, that you wanted to step behind the camera, how did you decide between potentially directing Insidious versus directing the next Conjuring film. It's funny. It's funny because, you know, I got this offer the day that I started shooting, literally the day that I started shooting Conjuring 3. And I was like, it's so oh, wow. funny because these movies are not intertwined to me. They are hmm. to fans. But to me, <laughs> you know, me and James and Steve Coulter and some of the, you know, Eleanor does makeup, you know, there are a few sort of holdovers between you know, Mike Burgess, or who's, who's uh, you know, works behind the camera, DP, um, that that can float in between both worlds. But they're so separate in my mind of experiences and times in my life. Um, so the there was a conversation that, with James <laughs> uh, about like, you know, not not an are you sure you want to do this, but like, you know, there maybe there will be something down the road if that, you know, you've got the Conjuring universe to deal with too, and whether that's a movie or a mini series, whatever is going to happen. But, you know, you have to look at the opportunities that are in front of you. And really, more important than all the career stuff, the story, you know, mm -hmm. and this just seemed like the right, there were, there were the nuts and bolts of the story of Dalton going to college. So, and that's kind of really, you know, if I look at the original pitch of mine, that was about 15 to 20 pages long, and it was like Dalton going to college, a couple scenes with Josh, no Renee, no family struggle, um, no Chris, uh, you know, no Ben Burton, smash face stuff. N none, of, none of that was in there. Uh, and then I thought about it, and I was like, you know, if I were to do an insidious movie, I would want to attack, confront, question and honor the second movie and the first movie. Like I would just want to kind of go at it. Um, so that was the story I'd want to tell. I'd want Rose in it. What if you can't get her? Like, well, let me, I'll let me deal with that. I'll let me ask her, you know? Uh, you know, what about who's going to play Dalton? You know, these kind of things. Ty, only Ty. You want the whole family back? Yes, whole family back. You know, um, want to be a father and son journey. Uh, I got an idea for a for a, another father, you know? Uh, it's something we've never talked about. You know, all these things that I wanted to put in there, put them in an art, not just college, make it an art school. I went to theater school, I know what that's like. Uh, so you got this, so all these elements that it just made sense to do the movie, because I knew it was something that I was gonna be, certainly with your first film, it's gotta be something you're super passionate about, because there are gonna be so many variables that you have no control over and you don't know. Right, every day was like a new experience. Like, 
never done a tech scout, you know, like, like just never done. It was a constant state of that. Never done this before, never been in a marketing meeting, you know, things that you just don't do as actors. Right. So uh, it, it just made sense that this, this was the first one out of the gate. It's funny for you to say that um, your original pitch was mostly focused on Ty's character because there was a scene in this, uh, Patrick, where you um, you call your son and you're like, I'm going to go find out what's happening to me. And as an audience member, I was like, did Patrick just write himself out of the movie? Did he just, <laughs> did he just clear himself up to not have to act in the rest of this film? <laughs> but clearly you're in a lot no, of No, that, uh, that was an <laughs> added scene, actually. I wasn't in the movie. Uh, if anything, I was... If anything, I'm I'm not I'm not precious about my performance a, at all. In fact, uh, some of the stuff that we went and did additional photography on was was my stuff because I didn't have a lot of my stuff in there because um, I didn't want I didn't I didn't need the movie to be about me. I just that, that that was not my goal with the movie. But we just found it just worked better, and we needed Josh to you know audiences know. Me and Rose. So you 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 want you know you want audiences to to be fulfilled and not go where'd that guy go you know so that <laughs> that's was, why I could never be an actor director because every shot would just be of me. Yeah, well, that's so that's true. right. It's, that's right. There's a lot the of visual that. elements of this podcast are really focused heavily on Jake. <laughs> yeah, your frame reason, looks though, a little I mean, bigger. See, yeah, um, I do want to talk to you though, Patrick, about um, the backgrounds of scenes, and I noticed that in the Insidious franchise. As an audience member, I find myself paying attention to what's going on in the background more than anything else, because it feels like that's where the scare might be coming from. And you play a lot with things that are going on in your background. And I just want to hear about your approach to, you know, when you're setting up a, a shot, knowing that we're going to be deliberately looking at something that might be happening behind the characters. Yeah, I think you when you go, the answer is good. I'm glad that's what you're looking for. I'm, I, I know that. People, you know, that's part of the misdirect is understanding where sometimes where is it coming from? And but you don't want the audience to just be looking for a scare. You know, you I, I want them to be invested in the story that we're trying to tell. So, you know, for instance, the that townhouse sequence where I'm flipping up the things and you see them across the street and coming yes. closer. Yeah. And I had a couple different versions of that, even shot a couple different versions. But um I I wanted him to appear in daylight, uh, just kind of lurking, uh, yeah. not understanding. And you, we'd already we had already seen him. We had just seen him out of focus, and so we're wondering: is that? I think that's the same thing. That would make sense. It's got to be the same guy. Now I can see him in focus. What's wrong with him? You know, I that that stuff I love, and then I love to pull back and maybe have people think, oh God, now he's gonna be inside. Like I, I try yeah. to put myself, because one of James's coolest scares in the first one, it's so simple, but using the double of, uh, of walking back and forth, we call him the long haired fiend, back and yeah, forth. Yeah. And then he's in the house, so great. Yeah. It's so simple, it's so great. Uh, <laughs> but you can't do that anymore, he already did it. So I just wanted to play with that. So I kind of took a kernel of that and then, um, and then I always loved in uh, in Carpenter's uh, in the Mouth of Madness when uh, the guy with the axe comes out and Sam Neill is having uh, he's he's in the restaurant and you see the guy walking across the street going crazy and Sam Neill they're just talking you know and I was like this is fantastic and you never think he's gonna come through the window and the guy just comes through the window they get shot and all of a sudden turns into this weird little action sequence I love that so I wanted that and then I was told. Yeah. No, <laughs> I was told <laughs> I was. I don't mind saying that. I love all these guys, but they, they, I won't say they fought me. I was strongly disagreed with that scene should be at night. No, I really want it during the day, guys. We got, no, come on, follow me here. You know, I love, I love, you know, I, one of the things that I love in the first movie that because there's so many incredible scares in that first film, you're, you you overlook the when tiptoe comes on and there's the dancing boy and she, when she's taken out the garbage and you're like oh god like it's the simplest of things but the fact that it's during the day is so freaking uncomfortable you I know hate and that in the scene. real I can, Sean I talks about that scene all the time yeah, on the I podcast. haven't forgotten that scene since yeah and in the real world so I was like I want this guy to be in the real world and I would get all this talk back of like 
but he, but did, does he really come through the glass? Yeah, he comes through the glass. Well, can we just shoot him on the other side? No, he's coming through the glass. But, the, but what happens after it? There's broken glass. What do you mean? He didn't imagine it? No, it happened, guys. Have you seen the other films? Like, it's real. Like, that's what's so cool about this world. So, um, you know, is it the best scare in the movie? No, but I, did, I don't need everything to be a jump scare. I want it to be uncomfortable. I want people to to go, I don't expect that, and then just go, okay, well, that just happened, you know, and then he's in the further in the closet, and, you know, I like the weirdness of the of this franchise. I really do. I think it's... It's cool. It's much different than Conjuring. That like you wouldn't, I wouldn't, you wouldn't do that in a Conjuring movie. And I like that. So I like kind of getting in the spirit of Insidious and having it sometimes be melodramatic and avant-garde and weird. And it's cool. I think the the, the series supports it. Patrick, that actually is my favorite scare in the entire movie. So I'm glad you fought for that. That was when I was telling you oh, earlier that my girlfriend looked at me. I was like, I've never seen you jump that high. Oh before. yeah, yeah while watching the movie, man. Um, so actually, you, that perfectly leads into my next question because horror is my favorite genre of all time. So much so that sometimes I take pride in knowing like, okay, it's coming from this way. Like right, this, right, is, this right. is where it's going to come from. Yeah. And there were moments where like, it felt like you knew that I thought it was going to come from this way. Yes. And therefore you made it come from that way. Yes. So I am sort of curious how much of your job is knowing what horror fans are going to be predicting and therefore... Uh, maybe doing the opposite of it. Like we think we're one step ahead of you, so you have to stay one step ahead of us being one step ahead of you. Yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> that, that makes any sense whatsoever. No, no, it makes perfect sense. Sometimes it can be done with um, with music. Lee was really helpful with that, I gotta say, because there were some times where we would uh, talk about something and, he, and then he'd say, you know, try it without try it without music, like you watch, and you know, and um, because it's a, it's a very knee jerk reaction to sort of like, right, then the big sting comes and this comes and that comes, you know, music, you know, and sometimes that's cool. And I, I think you need, you do need to pepper that in there because audiences do, you kind of want to lull the audience into thinking something is coming and then just totally pulling the rug out. So that that's fun to me. I just laugh when I do it because I think it's, I think it's funny. I like watching people squirm. It, it, it makes me chuckle. Um, I, I think, I think. Actually, one of the greatest tips Lee gave me was uh, I, I had some sequence in there and I had music and the music worked cool. It's just a little eerie because I wasn't I wasn't quite going for, I just wanted more of like a tone setting. And he said, just try it without it. And I was like, really? You think really without? He's like, just cut it all. Watch, let the audience have the moment. And it was like, it had been, music had been in there for months. And then you take it out. And as soon as you take it out, you're like, Oh shit, of course. Like that's great. Yeah. You know, and I and I I really that's where I admire these guys. And I'm not afraid to admit that there's a lot of stuff that I knew like the back of my hand. And then there's some moments where, what am I not gonna lean on the guy that have made franchises, two franchises? Like there's a real tremendous asset and we're surrounding yourself with people that that really, really, really push you. But because they ultimately know whatever take you choose, whatever music you put in, take out. It's all you. Like they walk away and you can do whatever you want. It's your movie. So, um, but it was a real tremendous help. James too. James will come in. I would show James a bit of a trailer that I don't even cut the trailer. Trailer has nothing to do with me. And he would kind of, and he would text me like, hey, in that one shot, and like he's doing Aquaman too. Like we're like doing reshoots on Aquaman too. Like it has nothing to do with the insidious. And he would say, hey, I saw that moment in the trailer. What, try this in this moment. And you're like, oh, good idea. Didn't even think of that, you know? Um, it's great, it's great. So you wanna surround yourself with people that, that and, and more than not, like I rarely would go, oh, I disagree totally, that doesn't make any sense, you know? Cause I, I have a similar uh, sensibility. That's probably just working together over 13 years, but uh, um, yeah, they were a tremendous help. I'm glad you brought up music, Patrick, because that's where I was going next. Um, I, I stuck with the, the song over the end credits just cause I was kind of digging it. Halfway through, it really kicks in, and I was like, "God damn, this is a great song." I I love sort of power ballads from the '80s kind of thing, and it had that sort of feel to it. But then yeah. I got to the, I was like, "Who is this?" I want to find out who this is, and I found out it's a band called Ghost, which I've never heard of before, and it's this Ghost featuring Patrick Wilson. So, what is Patrick Wilson doing in that song? Yeah, no, I know. I uh, 
Well, that's a long time coming. Uh, to, it's a long answer. The, the, the short version is that is a band that, I, that I've loved for several years. Uh, they did Hunter's Moon for Halloween. So okay. they are, uh, in the simplest of terms, lyrically a satanic, like really pop metal group. They've been nominated, won Grammys. Uh, an, inc an incredible band. I, they really are awesome. Tobias Forge is the, the, really the brains behind the operation. He writes everything and he's, he's tremendous. Um, and I like, let me just say, I'm a big metal head. I also love country music. And I mean, I'm a massive music fan. I, 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 I could go to hip hop shows with my kids. So I'm, I, but I really, I loved, what I love about their music and Ghost, um, yes, they're kind of, it's not a metal tune, as you know. That song was written by Dave Stewart of the Eurythmics for the Shakespeare Sisters in about 1992, I think, uh, somewhere oh, around Oh, that's there. crazy because the lyrics match your movie almost. Like, I thought that there were moments in the lyrics Dude. where I was like, oh, did he commission this? No, <laughs> I, I, I wish. I wish I had that money in that time. No, I... I had been looking for a song. I knew I wanted a great end credit song. I, I kept thinking of like, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street 3 when Dokken does Dream Warriors. And I was like, but only guys that are like, you're nodding because we're like, you know, 50 year old white guys are like, yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> but like, that's not necessarily the audience, core audience of Insidious. So I'm like, well, it can't be a joke. Like I can't, it can't the song can't be a joke. But I don't. I want it to be truthful to me, and I'm I'm a big music nerd. I, I handpicked all that music in there. I'm I'm I would uh, so every note that's in that movie. I'm I I I I was very precise with. Um, but the song really, I have to thank Tim Bickford, who is who works at their label at Ghost Label, and and I went to their concert and I talked to Tobias um, of Ghost and. You know, I, I didn't know. I didn't know if I I didn't have the time or the money or or, or honestly, other people other than me. I'll be very honest with you. This is all me. I'm not. I have no yeah. problem saying that. I did it behind everyone's back. I that that's the <laughs> honest to god truth. Um, I that's had the awesome. support of my musical supervisor, but like. <laughs> Sony didn't know. Blumhouse really didn't. Know. Like they they knew in theory, <laughs> but like, but like I you. knew we had a budget. I knew we had a budget for music, and I stayed within that budget. And I had befriended the, their manager and their label, and he would send me tracks that Ghost was doing. And he said, you know, and I said, these are the themes of my movie, light and dark, the balance of light and dark, and this other, the further, and something of fathers. And, and I told him all my themes, and then I got back about two months later, you know, there's this song that's gonna be on their box set. It's already done. Tobias has recorded it. It's just him singing it. And I said, great. Would it be cool if I sang with him? And they were like, you know, and I, I, I wanted them to know I wasn't just some chump, like I can sing. So, yeah. um, and they love the You're idea. Phantom, for God's sakes, come on. No, I mean, he's a master of branding. I mean, if you see their images, the music belies their image, which I love. Their image is sort of like the, the what, what Kiss was for us. Like, what is okay. going on? Very dark. This Pope is crazy mask, you know? I mean, it's very, very, very theatrical. And I love that. And it fit. And he sent me this song and I listened to those lyrics, like you just said. And I was like, oh, this is perfect. And they were like, yeah, Tobias would love you take the first verses, first two verses. He'll come in with the change. So he'll basically be the demon. And I was like, this is perfect. So it's sort of like almost sung from Josh's perspective, almost Josh of Insidious 2, actually, kind of weird. And then, and uh, so I, we just set it up. I went and recorded it. Uh, the, his tr track was already done, and I said I'd like to really sing, kind of wail at the end, like my nod to sort of Iron Maiden. So I, I, and I, I just went for it, and I talked to Tobias and said, "Hey, I'm just going to take a swing at the end." He's like, "Go, go for it." So yeah, so we now have this weird, crazy single. And my wife, That's who knows nothing, awesome. my wife doesn't like metal or anything. She's like, "Oh my god, the song's so beautiful!" I'm like, right? If you listen to the lyrics, it's super dark. But I love that. <laughs> That's the movie to me. It's this beautiful melody, and you're like, "Hang on a second, why is he singing about being in chains?" Like, like when you come back to your own world, what is happening? It's perfect. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's um, incredible. Thanks that for sharing. That's awesome. That. It's a long story. Uh, Patrick, Sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna shift gears for a second. Um, and because the very first time I ever interviewed you uh, was at the 
Beverly Hilton Hotel at the Watchmen Junket. And from that day on, I every single time I've spoken to you, I've reminded you that Watchmen is an absolute masterpiece. I still have the New York full page New York Times ad that says cinematic masterpiece and has my attribution on there. Um, that being said, I still tell people like it came out. It was too too brilliant for its time. It yeah. came out just a couple of years too early. Do you think if Watchmen came out today? it would have been received differently or would have performed differently than it did at that time. Well, today is even different than two years ago. So sure. let's just say that, first of all. Um, I, I will tell you this, uh, Watchmen is, might be, I, I would probably put a large amount of money on this, is the only movie of mine that I have watched front to back since a premiere. Uh, and I, really? I watched it a couple last year with my 13 year old. The all, I and I, I I mean that. The and I love a lot of the movies that I've done. A lot of them I don't, but a, but I'll I'll I might watch a few minutes when they're on. It's like a looking at an old friend. That's the only mm. movie that I've watched front to back, and it's that movie's awesome. And uh, Zach, just, what was the reason? What was just because you wanted to share it with your son? I wanted to share it with my son. I also probably wanted to fast forward through the scene with me and Malin in the ship. Uh, so I needed, to, I needed to stay close by. No, I just, I wanted to look at it as, as an older guy, as a, as a filmmaker, as a, someone who uh, I've heard this for years and I don't disagree. It's a, it's a weird thing to say it's before it's time, but I, I know what you mean, but it's like, if the movie didn't happen then, you know, I, I remember shooting and we were shooting a scene, I think it was in, in Adrian's office, and I was in Mandy's office, right? And just as we were shooting this, I think Nolan released a shot of Dark Knight and it was a very similar shot. And it was really sort of like, almost like, oh, this is where movies are going, um, if that makes sense. So I knew Zach was kind of, he was ahead of the curve. You know, it, it's weird to say that audiences weren't ready for it, but you you need a movie like that. You know, you need a movie like that. You need movies to go so dark that then Avengers can go so light. You know, I, I, I do believe in that. I, I believe you need, oh, I don't know if we're ready for that yet. Let's do this, this is fun. So maybe without it, the the movies kind of stay you know, you look at a lot of the, you know, I mean, you had Spider-Man and those movies worked, but you know, you, you, you know, obviously without stating the, you know, yeah, yeah, stating the obvious, but Marvel changed the game. But I think, I think you had to have those movies. I think you had to have the other side of it in order to go, okay, there's a reason that movie didn't land right now. What can land right now? Enter Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man, you know? So, I think those movies kind of have to, they kind of have to work together. Um, I do think it would be received differently now, but I think it would be received even differently, maybe pre-pandemic, you know? I think it's a different, right. it's a different game now. Um, but yeah, I love that movie. I love what- Sure, Are you, but you can't judge a movie on opening weekend. You judge it by the fact that we're, that almost 15 years later, we're, we're still talking about it. To me, like that is, that's the win. 100%, and you still will. I mean, I'd love to yeah. do that movie now. I mean, well, I would. I honestly, I think that'd be so awesome to just do it now. And I and I and I dug the series, but you know, my comment was always, "Yeah, the series is great. It's not Watchmen, but it's great." <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, we're being told we have five minutes left, and I want to jump to this um, this scene, Patrick, because you get to share a scene with with Lin Shay, who yeah. obviously is you know seminal to this franchise. And I won't give away the context of it, but how important was it for you to have a moment where Elise meets Josh and and they get to interact? Yeah, it was uh, uh, vital. Uh, I I won't lie, that was my idea. I I didn't. I didn't want her, yeah, without giving everything away, I didn't want her the way we had seen her before. I, I wanted very consciously to not, look, she comes in and saves the day in the second film, and that's sort of her role. But I was like, we're 10 years later. Like, I can't just have her come out of the dark and save everyone. Like, I, 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 this is a different, this is a, this is a different story. It's a different time. Don't know if Dalton would really know her. Like. It doesn't, doesn't, you know, I, I, it's, it's weirdly too much to unpack. What I wanted to do was present her in a very uh, important beat moment, um, 
that honestly, between you and me, if they do six, seven, eight, five, 15, I don't care, but it, it gives her a new runway. That's, that was my goal. Um, because she died in the first film. So you can't, you can't keep doing prequels. What is that person, that ghost, that, that entity? What is she like now? We know she's on another plane, but what does that mean for us? So that was why it was a very carefully chosen and uh, uh, scene in there that I think has some nice resonance. And, and clearly I adore her. She can do no wrong for me. And I, you know, but for, what she was brilliant in, and she was her whole movie. So I knew just for the sake of change, we needed a new, it needed a new arc, you know? Uh, we couldn't just keep revisiting the same, mining the same field. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Patrick, Sean and I said something almost at the exact same time a couple hours ago, which is uh, we both want some of those paintings or some of the drawings from this film. And we were instantly, we're like, wait, where are, someone has to have them. It was your idea to come up with the art school, but yeah. I am curious as to like, who has, who has the drawings now? Cause I would love to have one. I do. All uh, of them. No, not all of them. Uh, most of them, the, the, the good ones were done by my friend, uh, Ricky Mujica, who's an artist, uh, rickymujica.com. Ricky is an incredible realist. I mean, Parsons teaches that art students league, like he's no joke. Uh, I've known him for 30 years. We did a Shakespeare program together literally 30 something years ago. Wow. So uh, when he was like, among other things, was like an actor for a little bit. But uh, uh, yeah, he's like a Renaissance man. He can do no wrong in my book. But I knew when I, when I did this, he also understood the assignment, you know, meaning he, he could paint it, he could draw at different levels. He'd go, well, this is about a 13 year old. Now let's make him about 17. I don't wanna make it too good. Now he's getting really good. Now let's paint. Now this is how you'd paint. You'd use shellac over it so you can paint on top of charcoal. So um, yeah, we really nerded out about the, uh, the, the artwork. Uh, and so finally, yeah, the last piece I have, the piece of us on the, on the wall. You that, which is, oh yeah, that was, that, yeah. that, that, that gets you. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I also, I thought the scene, you know, where they talk about having to destroy your art, you know, in order to, to really build yourself back up again was such a significant moment as well, too. Not for, not just for that character, but for the movie in general. Yeah, so. I agree. I agree. But I will not All be right, ready. Patrick, they're kicking art. us out. So, um, but we want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Sure. And, uh, and we really appreciate it. And congratulations. Continued success. Great to see you guys. Now, will I see you again? Good to see you, buddy. Will I see you again in, in like 10 minutes? 45 minutes, okay, but great. it'll be like for like, a th we, we do a big like musical a three hour. number. We have a, yeah, 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 great. exactly. A three hour long musical, insidious musical number. And Save all the good stuff for them. dinner at six. <laughs> dinner at six at your house? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Terrific. It's going to work out we'll great. There. I'll bring dessert. <laughs> thank you. Bye, guys. See you guys. We want to thank our good friends at Sony Pictures and, of course, Patrick Wilson for joining us to talk about Insidious, The Red Door. I want to give you guys my reaction to the film. Um, Jake, the guy's chance to see it as well, too. He's not here this week. Uh, Kevin didn't get a chance to get out and see it just yet. You know, I, I like Patrick a lot. <laughs> I like Patrick a lot. I think he does a pretty good job directing the film. The film is just it's the fifth film in a horror franchise. And by this point, and, and I, I hate this because to me, the first Insidious is one of the scariest horror films I've seen in a really, really long time. And one of the things that the franchise does do well, and, and the Red Door even continues this, is take really basic um items and figure out how to make them terrifying in the first movie i've discussed this a lot it's those um baby monitors that you have in your kid's room and there's voices coming over the the the, the monitor in this one and it was so unnerving there's this a moment too and we talked about it with patrick in the interview uh of rose burns character bringing the trash out to the alley and the camera follows her out and when it goes past the window you see that that little boy dancing in front of the record player which freaks me out as still to this day and patrick and i talked about that scare but there's a moment in the red door too of him uh, getting an mri because he's trying to figure out why all these things are sort of plaguing him psychologically so he goes to see a doctor to figure out that there's something wrong with him uh with something actually in his brain that's causing him to see these different things and the mri sequence is like an all-timer um it's just a really great scare a really unnerving sequence that patrick d d uh, directs extremely well the rest of the story, which follows uh, Ty Simpkins' older character away to college, is not as compelling as some of the other Insidious stuff has been. Um, so I don't fault Patrick necessarily. I kind of think it's an issue of the script. Um, 
They do try to bring Lin Shay back a little bit. I, I'll leave it for you guys to figure out how that's going to go. They do leave the door open for the franchise to continue. But, you know, whereas I think The Conjuring started to lose a little bit of steam with its most recent uh, installment and it wasn't quite as good as the first two, uh, this fifth Insidious, surprise, surprise, is starting to feel like it's losing a little bit of its luster. But what's interesting, too, is that I kind of went back and looked this up. The previous Insidious movies did not do well critically um, and they still have an audience. They still go on to make a decent amount of money. So I'll be curious to see if people turn out. Kev, how many Insidiouses have you stuck around with after the first one? Do you watch any of the prequels? The first two. I saw the first two. The first one scared me. The Conjuring scared, the, you know, scared me very much. The first two Conjurings and then the first Insidious. The first Insidious was actually one of the most shocking horror films I remember seeing in recent memory. Like, like it was PG-13, I, th- I want to say, and it was still really, really scary. Because I think the first, the, the Conjurings are R-rated and the Insidious films, I want to say, are PG-13. I could be wrong, but like, but that first one was terrifying. But that's Absolutely James terrifying. Wan and Lee Whannell. Like when James Wan yeah. and Lee Whannell are clicking, they make some of the yeah. best, most original horror films out there. Gabe, have you stuck yeah. stuck up with the franchise at all? Or No, I've only seen the first one and then okay. I, I kind of fell off of it. Um, I enjoyed the first one. It's, uh, you're yeah. right. It's a great horror movie. But yeah. the, the do you think it's Insid- worth it? It sounds like yeah. you've seen them all, right, Sean? You're you're caught up on yeah. it. Is it worth do you think it's a franchise that's worth sticking with? Yeah. I mean, it's so long as they can come up with a clever idea, you know, for having to like there's this the, there's this place that you can go to um in the Insidious franchise called the Further. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of what they're it's like astral projections is the theme that they're talking on, where mm. like somebody's able to sort of push themselves into this area called the further. And when I was describing it to Michelle, she was like, oh, it sounds like the upside down and Stranger Things. And I was like, yeah, but like the upside down stole from Insidious. Like, Insidious yeah, right. has been around here for a really long time. Yes. Are they similar? So, yes, you can continue to go down that route. And there's definitely um, areas within the main family that are worth exploring. Um, so I'd be OK if they continue to do more of them. But it's like. How many franchises at uh, film number six, you know, reinvent themselves unless it's Fast and Furious, which I guess did, did something like that with five. So bring the rock into yeah. the insidious universe and then uh, <laughs> maybe, we're, maybe we're cooking with gas at that point. So um, but what's interesting, too, is that there's not a lot of horror in theater, theaters right now. And so mm-hmm. this could be a good time for insidious the red door to come out. And um, it really feels like the in, you know how like the, the superhero genre had its moment where like it just expanded outside of the summer and now it's mm-hmm. kind of most of the year. And it feels like this feels recent to me because I feel like horror movies either came out in like January when nothing else was coming out or they came out in the scary, spooky season. And now it feels like they've had such 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 a success with sort of lower budget horror films that it's just like any weekend they can find in the year that's open. That's like we'll throw a horror movie there and it'll make us money. Well, you know who does that? It's Blumhouse. Like Jason Blum kind of realizes, hey, if I'm going to open Freaky, you know, or some such thing. It doesn't matter when I open it. I'm going to draw an audience to it. Yeah, they'll show up. That's awesome. So we'll see. We'll see how Insidious does. Um, but I loved having Patrick on the show, and I think that he was a terrific conversation. That's I hope awesome. You guys enjoyed it as well as we did, too. It's fun to sometimes have actors um, who make the transition over after long careers. Like it was fun to be able to pick over some of the uh, films that Patrick has done and the directors that he's worked with and then saw, you know, the different things that he has brought to his own experience. All right. So we want to. Uh, We've been talking about the fact that with this new format that we wanted to bring a lot of the um, the energy and some of the cool things that we were doing as part of the premium format uh, into the main show because of the amount of fun that we were having with it. And and part of the thing that we seriously enjoyed doing were uh, games, because I honestly do think that, like, the people who are listening to the premium franchise uh, to the premium feed enjoyed playing along you would hear people tell us like oh i did this well you know or i i got more than than you guys in this one and this is what i did well and one of the games that we really enjoyed playing which was um set up for us by a longtime listener loyal uh friend of the show donovan who turned us into turtles this week Mm -hmm. uh it's called what year was it and gabe why don't you set up the the rules for the people who yes. are going to be listening there, and playing. There will at home. be many first time listeners to this game. I'll explain it uh, as um, simply as I can, and then we'll get into the first round. And I think if you didn't get it, you'll get it pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, but basically, what year was it? Is I have three clues to give you in each round. Um, and each clue is a movie that was, they were all released in the same year. And I'll, re- I'll uh, reveal the clues one by one. And after each clue, these guys will get a chance to write down their guess and lock it in. 
Depending on how many clues it takes them to get the correct answer will determine how many points they get at the end of the round. So I will reveal clue number one. They'll make their guess. They'll let me know they'll lock it down. They're, they're locked in. Um, I'll reveal the second clue. If they, if they have to change their answer to the second clue, it's only worth two points instead of three. Um, if it takes all three clues, it's only worth one point. Um, and if you don't get it right, you don't get it right. As I it's said, it's a little unfortunate Jake's not here because he usually has some kind of a theme song to go with the fun games. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. Maybe I'll get him to send one in. Just record. He'll be on the uh, <laughs> lake or wherever he is in Texas. Yeah. And, uh, Taking a break from his vacation to mock up a, a theme song for what year was it? All right, boys. What do you say we jump right into it? Let's right go into it. OK, I'm feeling pretty good. Feeling good. We'll start Jake's with our, not here. He can't beat us. We'll start with our first round. Like I said, folks, if you don't get it, I think after one round, it'll it'll be clear. But with our first round, your first clue is the movie Her. Oh, her. And this is worth three points. One clue worth three points here. Oh, that's interesting. Sean, do you feel uh, conf- confident? Interesting. Or you're, you're just in like, no, a, no, do you feel I like don't. You're in the right decade. You're in the right decade. Um, I know it's you got to go a little bit further back, but I don't know how far back I should go. I'm going to because I so I'm trying to think about this because I hosted I introduced Spike Jones at a screening for this, I think, at AMC Georgetown. I have a photo of him and I in front of the her poster and her is the movie that made me want to visit Shanghai because if you're if people aren't familiar with the movie, it takes place in futuristic L.A., and he shot all the exteriors or a lot of the exteriors in Shanghai to make it look like Joaquin was walking through a futuristic L.A. Friend of the and show, Joaquin Phoenix, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and I really wanted to go to Shanghai because of that movie. So I'm trying to think of the time frame of when that would have been. All right. I'm locked uh, in with my I'm locked in with my three point guess, but I'm Sean's not feeling great in. about it. Not right. uh, I'm not I'm not feeling great about mine, but I'm locked in my three point guess as well. All right. We'll move on to your second clue. Okay. If we change, we switch to two points, right? Yep. Yep. Correct. Okay. Your second clue is World War Z. Ooh. Oh, World War Ooh. Z. Oh, and again, I, I can't say this enough. Thank you, Donovan, for this awesome game. We've had a ton of fun playing it in the premium feed. We couldn't be more excited to bring it to the larger audience, and hopefully everyone else has as much fun as we've been having. World Wars. This is like a real gray area of like <laughs> movies I, I know <laughs> I've seen I, and covered extensively. The one point, the one point clue for I'm, this is great. I think I'm one year off, but I'm going to stick with my three pointer. I also because I'm not sure. With, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm also sticking with my three pointer. Okay. Okay. They're still locked in for three points for your yep. final clue. Okay. Which will bring you down to one point if you need okay. to make any adjustments. The Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, that doesn't help me. This is <laughs> it's all right in this uh, gray area. I think I'm one year off, but I'm going to stay just because I'm not entire. <sighs> yeah, I'm going to stay. By the way, Wolf of Wall Street slowly climbing up PJ's rank of uh, favorite movie of all time. Oh, wow. Oh, currently I mean, Ferris Bueller movie. is still his his number one. But weirdly like, similar movie. <laughs> he watches <laughs> he watches Wolf all the time. now. So. I would argue that Wolf of Wall Street is DiCaprio's best performance. And the reason I would argue that is because it hits all angles, dramatic, physical comedy. It, it just encompasses the range that he displays yeah. in that character is incredible. I think he should have won the Oscar. He's for tough. That film. He's he's really tough for best performance because he has such a range of That's specific, why I think Wolf of specific gives, gives it sure, all. Sure, sure. But yeah. he has such a range of specific characters. And I think there's merit to when he singles in on on a character that's maybe not doesn't have as much going on as Wolf of Wall Street, and he goes yeah, that deep, a little more dialed in. Yeah. Also, that's yeah, also impressive in its own way. I like don't Shutter hate, Island. Well, I was gonna say I don't hate that he won for Revenant, though. I don't. I'm not. I'm not mad at that. Yeah, I like the Revenant. I do not love the. Re- I. I. He's I, great. I, 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 but Jake and I had this discussion, and I think the the discussion that I always think about when I think of the Revenant is: is he really acting, or is he just reacting to the environment? That's like th- I that would say, an, it's an I think interesting that's a mis- thought process. I think that. Well, I don't know. I'm not saying, I, no, no, no. But uh, but my point is, some of I acting think is that, reacting. I think that True. there are yes. Famously, I think the quote is: "Acting is reacting." Um, it is. Yeah. 
but uh uh I, yeah i think that's just one way to define acting like i think some people like again i think the when we talk about the oscars and stuff as like what was the hardest thing to do is kind of a bit reductive but mm. i think that's okay like if an actor is like i'm gonna put myself in the situation sure. to become that like that is acting anyway like you're supposed to just do that internally and like just because you do that externally is a feat on its own. We're, we're not. It's a great performance. No one's no one's scoffing at Tom Cruise like Man, he tied himself to the plane. You know, like it, of course it looked like he was tied to a plane. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, at the end of the day, Revenant's a great performance. I just think yeah. Wolf displays him. Sure, I, I think, think it's a fair. All, I think it's it's just a full sure. circular three sixty look at his. Well, I guess what I'm power. saying is, it's not like Scent of a Woman, where you know, you're like, oh, he won for that, you know, for Pacino sure. kind of thing. Sure, Scent of a Woman's great though. Would you guys like it's to know good. if you scored any points? For this? Are we still playing the game? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Your three-point guess, Kevin McCarthy. 2009. Your three-point guess, Sean O'Connell. Okay. T- 2009 is the one I had in my head, okay. and I jumped forward to 2014. Wow. Because I thought 2009 was too far, was too far away. Question. And I'm worried it might be 2010 now. That's my worry. Or yeah, I've I've uh. I've asked you guys this before. I like <laughs> this. I think you guys have said no. You guys like the purity of the game, even though we made up these rules. Donovan made up these rules. Really. Do you want to give a point and not Jeopardy rules? Because that doesn't that doesn't make sense here. Closest. If no one gets it, closest no. gets a single point. A single no, point. I, no. Okay. Nope. I, I need it to be. It, well, yeah, I want. I, I want to play I some news it, for you, boys. <laughs> Neither of us got, got nothing. A couple of goose eggs. No points. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the, but uh, I'm, I agree with Kevin. We should get sure. it or not get it. Sure. Sound yeah. off in the comments because you guys are having fun too. If it's more fun for you, if they get a point, let me know. Uh, well, what's the I, year? I like that idea. That's what I'm getting to. So, oh. her, the films Her, World War Z, and The Wolf of Wall Street were all released in the year 2013. <laughs> Damn it! I was I could have had a point. Really you could, could have had a point. point. I did, a but point. I vehemently wow. voted against that. The, 2013. Wow. Okay. I didn't think yeah, it was that late. I know when you said 2009, I was like, I was like, wow, that's that's a yeah. different era to think about. Uh, I'm off. Yeah. Won't do that. But man, it's hard when you get that far back. Everything 19. kind of blends together. That's 15 years ago. 15 years ago. Wow. Holy cow! The day we're recording this episode. Mm-hmm. Back to the Future turns 38 years old. Wow. Yeah. 38. And Terminator 2 came out today also, but I think it was 32 years ago. Did you guys see that a, Dial yeah. of Destiny came out the same day as, was it Raiders? Oh, or, that's or, uh, uh, or Last Crusade? It was one of the Indiana Jones movies. It came out like the same day. I can't remember that's which one it was. I was like, that's, that's crazy. That's really cool. Um, all right. All right. For round number two. Normally this moves faster. Nah, it's okay. <laughs> no, it's, I, I like it's this. part of the fun. It's part of the fun. <laughs> Yeah, if you if you never tuned into the premium feed, uh, the energy that you're seeing is uh, we don't get anything done. Nothing. Else. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Your first clue for three points in the yes. second round is the film Goodfellas. What a transition, huh? Oh, wow. Wolf of Wall Street oh, I know Goodfellas. This. I unlocked it at three points. I thought this was this is Donovan. I got to I got some notes for you for three points. You're giving them Goodfellas. I think I know it. I'm gonna watch. That's a big wrong. movie. That feels like a that feels like a one point clue to me. Just wow. Uh, yeah. All right. I, think I, I I am putting it down. Okay. Uh, well, while we're on Goodfellas, mm-hmm. is Goodfellas Scorsese's best movie? I think it. Uh, yeah. Um. Jeez. I don't know. <laughs> this so is why. This is why the blend game. Is. This is why the blend game wasn't best because it's just a. It's Favorite. so it's a, hard to no, pick his. There's no such thing. It's one of yeah. them. I mean, you could. I think that yeah. there's like five of his movies that you could argue. You could argue most of them are one of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like most, right. most of his are pretty great. It's up there. It's, are you guys it's both, definitely uh, up there. Are you guys both yeah. locked in with three I'm points? In. I'm Kev, in. Have you locked in? I'm locked in for about three points. For two points. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Which I felt fitting. It's the only reason I picked this this year. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Hmm. I'm going to stay, but I'm not. You know what the, Sean, you know what the main feed audience hasn't? I'm looking for one. I got to find one. I might have used them all. The main feed hasn't been introduced to the, uh, 
multiple releases of the same name. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. In this game. <laughs> Wait till you see this. That's yeah. super frustrating. Like, it would be like three yeah. points. War of the Worlds. Yeah, I might have burned through <laughs> all the ones we had on this list. But uh, I'm keeping it because I don't really know the turtles, the live action turtles. Keeping it? Yeah, I'm keeping my three point guess. Kev, you keeping your three point guess? Keeping my three point guess. All right. For one point, the best picture winner of this year, which is one of the clues that I can include. Dances with Wolves. Oh, I think I got it. I think I got it, too. You're both staying locked I'm, in. I'm staying locked in at three points. Yeah, I am, too. I, f- I, I feel good. I, about, I feel good I'm about this one. It's, I think it's one. I think I'm either I either I have it or I'm a year off. Did Same. you guys? I think this is a random tangent, but do you guys see some of the, the drama behind Yellowstone stuff with um, uh, uh, with him leaving Yellowstone? Costner? Not, no. Not really, no. Well, anyway, a part of it is he's he's like finally making this Western he's been trying to make, I think he said for like 20 years. Like a film? Yeah. Oh, cool. And okay, I was curious if you guys read up on that because that's fast. Like Kevin Costner in a Western that he's been wanting to make <laughs> for like 20 years could be incredible. Did, oh, did, yeah. Did anyone, did you guys see Open Range that he made with Duvall? Oh, yeah. Open I mean, Range. I never saw is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. No, Open Range is a terrific Western. And it was like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Kevin Costner really loves this genre. And yeah. knows exactly I've never, how to make I've it. never seen Open Range. I've never seen it. It's great. You should do a double feature of Silverado and Open Range. They are two outstanding Costner Westerns. All right. Chalk well, them up. Well, gentlemen. Yes. You're both locked in for three, right? Yeah. Sean, what is your three point guess? 1990. Kevin, your three point guess. Same. Same. Gentlemen, I've got some bad news for you. Damn it. it all right. Is it 91? It's 1990, but you're still tied. It's 1990. Oh, you both hey, nailed all it. right. All right. There we go. I'll take hey, we still got it. That's all we got. Yeah, I love how you this... set that up as, as <laughs> yeah, if we didn't get exactly. anything. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, all right. Let me see. Let's find this is this is a fun. We've one. had this two is, Scorsese's in here now. Let's. I know. Let's like, do I need to do I need to thread it again with a? Um, are you ready for another round? Yeah. Round three. Are. Let's do it. Round three. <laughs> Got to break the tie. The Water Boy. For three points, the Water Boy. Now this could have come out in any year of like an eight-year run. Oh my God! Let me think. All right. Hold on. Uh, I'm thinking of like Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison, where those were. All right. I'm going to put a, down a three point guess. This is okay, I think this on. is a round where um, you're either going to be really excited or really disappointed once I reveal the next clue. OK. OK. I, I'm going to go. I either okay. have it or I'm one year off. <laughs> OK. <Same. laughs> That's pretty good. All right, I, I have my three point guess written down. Okay, you're both. I'm locked also in, in the same boat as Sean. I think also, I'm is Waterboy off. good? I'm gonna say no. When I, I was a child, him. it was funny, but I haven't seen yeah. it since I was a kid. Like I don't know. But it wa- it wasn't Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison level. No. It was I a mean, bit of a drop off. If you told me that the Waterboy was kind of the same thing as um, uh, what's his what's his Halloween one that we make fun of? Sorry, Hubie Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> if you tell me that it was just kind of Hubie, I'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. That's probably the same energy, <laughs> same thing. But then like he did like little Nicky. And yeah, like there he went through a, a a low, a low run. Yeah, for two points. Again, I think you're either gonna be really excited or really disappointed with this clue. This is a big clue for two okay. points. Armageddon. Oof, Sean. Sorry, okay. I just realized you probably know this very well. <laughs> I didn't think about that connection. Shoot. All right, so I I have to go to two. You points. probably just you probably just watched this, huh? I I did. Yeah. Well, but, recently enough. Sorry, Kev. I didn't think about him. You know, having I was off a year. It's okay. But I have I'm going to stay at my I'm staying at three points. Fascinating. Fascinating. Damn it. Sean's locked in for two. Kevin's still locked in for three. Playing defense. <laughs> and the only way you can in this game. Uh, for one point. Saving Private Ryan. OK. Yeah, I'm staying. I'm staying locked in. Kev, what's your three point guess? 1998. And Sean, your two point guess. Correct. 1998. 1998 is correct. I had 97. In my three point guess. So I was I was in between 96, 97 and 98 initially. And then I just. I, yeah, I went 98. An update for the folks at home. Sean has five points. 
and Kevin has six points, just one point ahead. Which Kev or Sean, if you had given me the chance to give you a point, you'd be tied. I'm just going to point that's that true. out. That's true. I know, but that that's not the rule. That's I'm not how we play the game. No. It just <laughs> makes it it makes it more fun. This I'm way. just stating facts, you know, just just describing an alternate universe to you. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> um, all right, let's go with for three points in our. I think this is the fourth round. No, this yes. is the. Fourth yes, round. this is the fourth round. Yes, yep. yes, yes. I have them written down here. Borat. Ooh. For three points. Oh, that's tough. That is tough. Borat. Yeah, again, uh, feels like an era, not a year, you know? Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, um, uh, boy. I'm, tr- I'm trying to think about So, again, th- because we're playing this in the main show, in my mind, I'm going to tell you where i'm at so basically in my head i hosted a radio show Mm -hmm. on cbs radio um around the the time that i think this movie came out and i i remember having sasha baron cohen on my show but as bruno later on after borat interesting so if i if i think about the time frame of when bruno would have happened it's and subtract some uh, it was so crazy. I had to do the interview with Sasha Baron Cohen in character as Bruno. <laughs> and you were, and stupid. you had to be Borat, right? You were dressed up. I know. I, I, and I'm, I'm on radio. Think about, you know, the explicit that character is, is yeah, the same with Borat. Yeah. And so I, it was wild. I had to bleep so much. Cause I, cause I, what, what I would do is I had a radio show that was on CBS radio from Friday nights from seven to 10. And I would record mostly I'd have like cinematographers, like, Wally Fister and Hans Zimmer and, and composers that all behind the scenes. But then at some points I would get like, I would get like names that were like people definitely knew in terms at this, at this time, not that people don't know Hans Zimmer, but at this time for a radio show, like I had the Coen brothers on for true grit. That's um, insane. That's pretty sick. But in this instance, I'm thinking about Bruno. All right. That's where my mind's at. Okay. All right. I'm locked in on, I think on. And I'm points, guessing. I'm essentially okay. throwing a dart at a board, <laughs> but okay. I think I'm in the vicinity. But my mind's like back in radio, so I'm trying to think of where that that missed this. We're closing. We, right we probably this. only have time for a couple more rounds. So this also, is easy. Shout These out to count. shout out to Maria Bakalova uh, for how amazing she was in the second Borat. Yeah, oh, she's she great, great. I loved her as Cosmo. That. I loved her as Cosmo. She was yeah. good as Cosmo, and she's yeah. outstanding in Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Oh, so do you remember how? funny Borat was the first time you saw it though. Sure, yeah. Like that scene oh, it's hysterical. People when still he quote wrestles, it. It's one of those comedies that people still still quote. But when he wrestles that guy on the bed naked. Yeah. Like that was <laughs> I, that that seeing that on the big screen, yeah. like I'd never seen anything like that before. It was like it was so Borat was very it was a big deal when it came out. I'm gonna go did, on I'm gonna yeah. go on record and say that Bodies 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 is officially underrated. Yes, because I feel like it comes up for me personally. I bring it up. I'm reminded of it. And I'm like, have you seen this at least once a month since it came out? Like at this point, you know, I was talking about so it good. profusely after we and saw shout it out to year, Rachel Sonnet. Is that her yeah. last name? I think mm-hmm. that's right. Yeah. I think she is incredible. She's, she's in a really new movie in called Bottoms. I think she has a new movie coming out, but um, she is extremely talented and on, on one of the best parts of bodies, 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 it's also bodies, bodies, bodies has one of the best endings I've seen yeah. in a long time. Like yeah, I did that, not see that, that coming. Look. It's great. That was cool. Yeah. Um, all right. You both locked in for three points. Yeah. yeah. So for two points, we have little miss sunshine. Shit. I think I'm okay. Oh, I'm like, I'm one year off. Wait a second. I think I'm one year off. So this is where Kevin oh. gambles. Oh, does he does oh. he make the adjustment now because he thinks he's one year off, or does he wait? wait I for think the I'm one point a two? couple of years off. Hold on a uh, second, little. I I think I'm one year off. All right, I'm I'm two pointing, locking him. Sean I, changed yeah. his guess. He's I did in for two points. I'm two points locking in. Kev, you gonna, gonna keep stay it? Stay at three because I'm not certain, which is okay. gonna. Be terrible because once you hit me with the one pointer, I'm probably going to realize that it was. I think for sunshine, is. I have it. That's the strategy of the game. You got to love it. Um, all right. For also, <sighs> uh, shout out to the late Alan Arkin, by the way, who we just lost. Yeah. Oh, who yes. Is outstanding in the yes, sunshine. Yes, yes, yes. Did you ever interview Alan Arkin? I did not. John? No, I didn't. I, I got him one time. To. Did you get him for that? Um, for Argo? No, I got him for the Zach Braff movie, and it was yeah. like, and I'll never forget it because it was it was Michael Caine, 
Morgan, it was called Going in Style. Going in, Going style. in style, yes, thank you. It was it was Michael Caine. So left to right, it was Alan Arkin, Morgan Freeman, Michael Caine in one room. <laughs> wow. For four minutes for four minutes. Oh my god. And then you and did you ask uh Alan Arkin questions about the Dark Knight? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait! I don't get it. Don't get the it. other two guys the other are, two in, are in the dark. Oh, that's right. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Um, no, I remember one of the things I remember about Alan Arkin in that in that interview was I had Michael. I, I asked Michael Caine about the story about his name because his name is actually like sure. it's, his name is not Michael Caine. It's like yeah, it's, a stage it's name, something. Yeah. It's Maurice Mickle Mickle White. I think <laughs> is, is it's something very you interesting. That. You should have kept that. Um, and he got the name because he was on, he was on a phone booth and he was looking outside the phone booth window and it was the Kane mutiny on the on playing in the theater at the time or whatever. And he was on the phone with his agent. Um, and I remember asking because I would heard this story, but I wanted to hear him tell it. But Morgan Freeman and Alan Arkin did not know it. So it's fun sometimes when you're in an interview and you ask a question and then the other people that are sitting with the actor start engaging in their own questions because they're curious about it and i remember alan arkin and morgan freeman just being like wait did you change your passport how did you do all this this is so yeah, yeah, interesting yeah. and like the way alan i remember alan arkin engaging in that moment do you know what that also that. does yeah, so. as a little junket trick it buys you extra time it does I often feel it, like the people don't count your time against you if the talent start to talk to each other yeah yeah that happened to me the other day I was yeah, no one's gonna Jamie. look at no one in that room's gonna look at morgan freeman and go hey <laughs> <laughs> well, pick it up. I was interviewing Jamie Lee Curtis and Tiffany Haddish the other day, and Tiffany was saying something that Jamie Lee Curtis was really fascinated by. So Jamie Lee Curtis started asking Tiffany questions, and it was like part of my interview. And I'm like, oh, this is this is kind of cool. All right, anyway, That's so funny. 2000. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. So continue on. Continue. I'm on. locked in. All right, you're locked in for two. Kevin's locked in for three. Your one point clue is the Da Vinci Code. <laughs> The Da Vinci Code. Kevin, how are you feeling? You feel confident? I am not. You have, a point, you, have a, you have a one point lead. You have a one point lead. So I'm going to stay right. at three, but I think I'm one year. I think I'm one year over. Sean, you staying at two? Year. I'm staying at two. Sean, what is your two point guess? 2007? That's the one I chose. I think it's 2006, though. I, I went 2007, but I think it's 2006. The answer is 2000. And six. Oh, oh no! son of a bitch. I literally almost changed to 2006. Right. I was so close. A, a, peak, a peak behind oh, the curtain. A peak behind damn the curtain. It. Damn Kevin dang has, it. Kevin has to get back to his TV show in 10 minutes, which means we okay. have to finish this game and wrap up. So I will call no tangent round. Do I have we'll a blast, chance to catch we'll up? Blast. Yes. Three you points. Three points. You five win. Five to yeah. six. Yeah. It's only one point. Okay. So this is the round. This is for all the marbles. All right. Oh, no man. stories. Just guessing. We'll get this is for the. This is oh. for all the marbles. This is for the. I do want to point out home. to people who complain that we got rid of the blend game. This, we've recommended to you in this segment yeah, about exactly. seventeen yeah. different movies you should. I, watch. I told y'all that it would come back around in its own yeah. way. All right. For all the marbles, we're gonna go all with right. for three points, Babe. Okay. Babe. I'm lock. I'm locking in. I'm locking in and I'm even capping my pen and putting oh, it down. You can uh -oh. watch that on, on YouTube. Uh oh, capped his pen, folks. The kid How are you so confident about The kid baby? has arrived. Um, he's thinking of Babe Big in the City and he's just hasn't babe. figured it out yet. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are, you a, are you a big babe? Head? Huge babe head. Uh, <laughs> they're, called, those are called, they're called babies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah babies. <laughs> All right, I mean, I, 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 the first year that came to my mind that I wrote it down. So All right. um, this was my that. it was my wedding vow to Michelle. I said that <laughs> that'll do. That'll do, Michelle. That'll do. <laughs> Are you serious? Thank God you didn't no. call it. <laughs> <laughs> That'll I was like, do. Wait a second. Did you really have babe dialogue in your, in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. I, I'm not confident, but I, I wrote down the first year that hit my mind. All right. Hey, that's a, that's a strategy. Yeah. For two, for two points. Yes. The best picture winner of the year. Oh, wait a second. Wait. Hold on a second. <laughs> Before you even say it, the best oh, no. picture winner that you're about to say would be would have been released the year prior. Correct. Correct. Well, no, right? this, no, I, no, these are like it won. No, it won the best picture of its of its of its year. OK, its I, got, I got what you're saying. The movie was released in the year that the answer is it won. It went on to win best picture. 
the following year. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Th- then that's helpful. Okay, all right. So y- the yeah. movie you're about to say one best picture the next year. How, do you, hey, do we want to? Uh, here's another thing, and we can adapt this game. When I get to, because I have two additional clues that sometimes crop up. I have top domestic gross of the year and best picture. If you want. When I get to one, before I give you the clue, you can write down what you think it is. And at the end of the round, if you had the right guess, or, or whenever I announce it, if you had the right guess, I'll give you a bonus point. Listen, I'm having okay. a hard enough time keeping up with I love it. I, I the regular points. parts of the All game. Right. Two points, two points. Kevin, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push through. Two points. Best Picture winner of the year, Braveheart. Oh, shit. I'm, I'm uncapping okay. my pen. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I was um, off. All right, I'm I got gonna, it now. I'm going to stay at three points. All right, two points for Sean, which if Kevin whiffs is enough to win. He's staying at three? He's staying at three. You don't he's have got a, it. But he's got a whiff. You don't have it. The one point clue. We're about to find <laughs> out. Is, is Apollo 13. Oh, I know. I'm good. I'm good, Ooh. baby. I'm, I'm good. I, my, the first year I wrote down, Rap. I'm 100% confident with Sean, it. Sean, how, how, how do you feel? Sean, how it do you didn't feel? Help. It didn't help, but I'm keeping my two-point guess. Wait, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm closing my pen by clicking it, out, uh, clicking it off. All right. I like that. There you go. I like this. Bravado. All right, the clues have been, have been dispersed. Kevin, you seem very confident. What is your three-point guess? My big concern now is I just put on a big show and I'm probably, what but if I'm the, wrong? <laughs> this is great. This is what'll make TikTok. 1995. Ooh. And Sean for two points. Okay. This could be where the kid takes it. 1997. <laughs> yeah. The answer. And our winner. Oh, God damn it. 1995. Yeah! Kevin takes it. Ah, wow. You got babe. 1995. Yeah, for some for some weird reason, <laughs> my mind went night right to 95. Yeah, and then and then what, that's why I kept asking. So because if he had said Forrest Gump, oh, for Best Picture, which is the year Forrest Gump won Best Picture in 95, but sure. it was a 94 movie. Yes, right. So that's why I was like in my mind when you said Braveheart, I'm like, oh, that makes sense because Braveheart would have won in 96. Yeah. I also want to point out that uh, f- 1995 was the correct answer. The the year that I capped my pen when I wrote it down was 2001. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. I wasn't winning at all. When did Babe Pig in the City come out? I want to say it's like 2004. The city was like 97. Wait, no, it was 98. Was it that? Yeah. It was 98? It would have been perfect if you actually were confusing it for Babe Pig in the City. <laughs> we, I've never right. seen Pig in City. Can we do a bonus round that doesn't count? My official TV segment is at 3.15. Okay. My show starts at 3. But I would love to do one more, just because this is too much if fun. If you have time, right. we still have to close out the show. Sean has to go through the rigmarole. You right, sure? One more. We one can more, do one like more. bonus round. Yeah, one more right, bonus right. round. All right. Quickie. Just to, just, oh, wait, just, like, how about like an all or nothing? Push all your chips on the table, right? Well, no, oh, you cool can... Well, yeah, yeah, you're you're way behind. It's not. I, I, I will I will say that I, I, <laughs> I I'm happy to have won the official rounds of you it. Did. But you did. You did. This sure. Whoever wins this round, all or nothing, I'm down. Okay. Of course, I'm going to lose. But go ahead. One more round. <laughs> I, uh, sure. All or nothing on a, on a I game. I set of myself points. up for this <laughs> for three for three points. Okay. Your clue in this bonus round that means nothing. The sting. <laughs> The Sting? Oh, your best picture winner. The Sting. Yeah, this is Paul Newman? Yeah. Oh, gosh. I have absolutely no idea. Capping my pen. Kevin, towards the end of his career, did they refer to him as Paul Oldman? <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did interview Robert Redford once and asked him legitimately if he ever went out and bought Paul Newman's... Uh, Tomato sauce. <laughs> because so, own. I had a legit I had a legit reason to ask it because I was interviewing Robert Redford for Pete's Dragon. And I remember like <laughs> tweeting out something about like, oh, I'm interviewing Robert Redford today. And then I realized, oh, I loved him in Captain America Winter Soldier. Sure. And in Winter Soldier, when he opens up the fridge in his in his in his uh, house, there's Newman's own like salad you know they dressing. Said, they, they put that there on purpose. You know, hundred yeah, percent. So yeah. I said to I said Robert, I said Mr. Redford, I said um, this might you be him, no, don't, lie, don't lie to our audience. You called him Robbie. Bob. You called him Bob. Robbie. No, I called call him Bob. Bob. 
No, but I literally said, I listen, I know this is a ridiculous question, but because your character had Newman's own salad dressing <laughs> in, in the fridge, have you ever gone to a store and actually bought it? And he goes, no. He goes, I have good taste. Oh. <laughs> and then he literally, and then he, and then he went on, and then he told me this amazing story about, about Paul Newman, about how he got misrecognized from in a store once. And it, it, it was really cool. I've only interviewed awesome. him Legends. once, but. Legends. Right, the, the sting. I need y'all yep. to lock uh, in. Kevin, I'm Sean? locked in. Sean's I'm locked, locked in. in. Yep. And I capped my pen. I mean, which I means am so nothing. Far now. off. No, okay. doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean anything. Okay. All right. For two I'm points, in, but I am so way off. For two points, Serpico. <laughs> oh two points. gosh, I am so I'm so off. Oh wow. Kevin put uh, 2014. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, put, I, put, I, put, I put 1966. By the way. Oh, um, you're too far back. You're too far back. I know. I know. Um. Okay. You uh, better. Okay, is I, Serpico before Scarface? That's what I'm trying to think in my mind. Yes, it is. I'm not okay, that I'm Sydney, trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. It's okay. Sidney Lumet directed Serpico. I'm locked in. Was you're it keeping yours or, or you're at two now? Keeping it. Keeping it? Keeping it. Yep. Keeping it. All right, so here's my train of thought. I'm thinking of Al Pacino. I'm thinking of these Serpico are good, and these Dog are good Day Afternoon. These are good thoughts. Dog <laughs> Day Afternoon. Well, well, Dog Day Afternoon and Serpico were both Sidney Lumet, I believe. I believe and, then, yeah. and I'm trying to figure out which one came first. I think Dog Day was first. Dog Day is pretty early. So this has got to be Scarface was 80s. Or 80. I think it might have been 80. But that's not the title. Wow. <laughs> Do you guys want me to answer uh, whether Dog Days was first or not? No. Sure. Uh, uh, oh, was Dog Day after? It's afternoon. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, it was after, though. It was after. <laughs> Serpico was after Dog Day? It's afternoon. No, Serpico was before Dog Day. <laughs> right, 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 right. Okay. All right. Um, what a jerk. <laughs> that's pretty. It's pretty good, actually. All right. I'm locked at two points. All right. For one point, your clue for one point in our final round American Graffiti. Oh, bang! bang. <laughs> <laughs> the kid! The kid! London in three! Wait, the George Lucas movie? Yes. Yeah. Georgie Luke. Man, I should have went for this, oh Sean, huh? You As his friends went. call this him. Is, this is bad. Um, Georgie Luke! <laughs> all right, answer me this. Star Wars was 77. Correct. Gra graffiti was before Star Wars. That's how he funded Star Wars. It was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because I because I'll just just for full disclosure, I wrote down 1977 as my second guess. Okay. And you're for um, one point. You're down to one point now. Yeah. So I'm gonna go. Okay, Locked in at three. Seven. Locked in at three. Hands in the air. All right, Kev. I just I need you to write one down so we can. This close is gonna out. hurt so bad if <laughs> we're already way over. <laughs> I'm uh, so confident. All right. Okay. All right. I'm I'm locked in. All right, Sean. Your three point guess. 73, baby. Kevin, your one point guess. 75. 1973, the kid. The kid! Ah! The kid! Ah! The kid! Ah! Pulls it out! Ah! But Kevin, of course, won. I, I set Kevin myself won. up for disaster. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin did win, won. though. <laughs> All Kevin right. did win. <laughs> All right, Sean, close us out. Let's wrap it up here. So that's uh, that, the, that is what year was it? And we will also continue to bring some fun games over to the show when we don't have a huge movie to review that was fun. Or, or big news to get into. Let us know down in the comments uh, of our YouTube channel whether you guys enjoyed the game um, and let us know if you guys did really well with it as well, too. Um, we also want to throw this out here to you guys because we're at the halfway point of the year. So if you're watching us on the YouTube channel, if you want to head over to the YouTube channel, which is YouTube, youtube.com backslash real blend podcast, tell us in the comments down below your top five movies of the year so far. We're essentially at the halfway point of the year. This is your chance to give us your top five. Um, that will also help some other people who listen to the show, uh, maybe pick up on a couple of different titles yeah. that they haven't yet seen. Um, and then I will let you guys know. So we're going to do this next week the, where the show is going to do our uh, official. No. So, so yeah, so this is, this is usually when we do it every year, Jake couldn't be here this week. Um, yeah. I am, I have a week in July earmarked, 
um, at, towards the end of July, but we have a couple big weeks coming up where I don't think we're going to have time to do it. So hopefully we'll get to this on the show, but if not, the comments down below, we want to hear your picks. Yeah. Um, and of course we'll be responding. I want to hear people's out. picks. I want to find out some things I missed. Again, like, folks, we want the, we want the YouTube comments to be, um, you know, where the, the blend game yeah. lives on, where the yep. conversation keeps going, where the positivity, uh, lives. So Head down there and have fun. All right. Meet the, in the meet meantime. That was a lot of fun. Uh, interact with us on social media in the meantime, while you guys are waiting for the next episode at Jake's Takes, at Kevin McCarthy TV, at Sean underscore O'Connell, at Gabe Kovach, and the show is at Real Blend. We'll be back to you guys next week with some exciting... In- is it exciting interviews yet? Exciting interview time? Are we getting close? Close. We're, we're getting close. close. Well, yeah, because I don't think... Uh, we have... Made, we, there's a hashtag if it happens next week, but like we don't know already at the beginning of this week if it's going to happen. All right, fair enough. Yeah. Keep it tuned in here. Talk to you guys next week. Adios. Pop Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Barbie. The man who moved the earth. Barbenheimer.